What's going on guys, it's Juan back here today with a new video and as always very excited to sit down and talk with you guys about more sports creative content. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. Let me introduce myself. My name is Juan Morales. I am a 24 year old content creator out of Toronto, Ontario and I work primarily in the sports creative world as a videographer, editor and graphic designer. Super simple concept. This is a what's in my camera bag type video. I did one of these when I first started my channel which is almost a year and a half old so definitely an update needed. So. We're just gonna go through my camera bag and I'm show you guys the gear I carry on a game day, what I use to shoot sports. So without further ado, let's just get right into the camera bag. And if you're interested in any of these pieces of gear, I will make sure to put a link in the description below. To start it off, let's actually talk about the camera bag itself. This is the InCase Pro DSLR bag. I have had this for two and a half years or so now. I don't remember how much it was. I think it was maybe around $170, $200. And I've had it for two years. This is a great bag. It's actually one of two bags that I have, but this is kind of where I carry my camera, my laptop, pretty much everything is in here. And then my other bag is this Hex sling bag, the Hex DSLR sling bag. And like I said, everything is gonna be down in the description below, but this is my second camera bag. Usually on a game day, I will bring both of these. This one has some stuff as well that I'll go over, but during a game, what I'll actually do is I'll put batteries, lenses, anything I might need on the go in this bag, and I'll keep my bigger bag in the media room or at the media table, just so I don't have to carry a bunch of stuff. This is a lot smaller, just slings over your shoulder. I just got it this year and I absolutely love it. So this is the Hex DSLR our sling bag, but we're gonna go over the main bag first and then we're gonna get to this one. To kick it off, we'll actually start talking about my actual camera, which is what I'm recording this video on right now, but I'll make sure to get some B-roll of it so you get to see it. My main camera is the Sony a7S III. I've had this camera since it dropped and I absolutely love it. I think it's the perfect sports content creator camera in so many different facets. I do have a video where I talk about it in a few different places, including my rig setup for it, which I will also leave in the description down below. The camera is in a small rig cage, which allows me to put a lot of different attachments such as monitors, handles, etc. I definitely recommend if you're in the sport video game, get yourself a cage with your camera because you just eventually will want to build up your rig just to give yourself some more flexibility and options when you're shooting. The next piece of gear is my Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8 lens. That is the lens that I'm shooting this video on right now and I cannot say enough good things about the Tamron 28 to 75. It's the perfect focal length for mid-range if you're shooting basketball or volleyball and you can be on the court close to the athletes. 2.8 aperture is great for low light and great depth of field. Really, really solid price point. It's a lot more affordable than your, you know, Sigma and Sony 24 to 70 equivalents. So if you're balling on a budget or you're, you know, you want to look for an equivalent, but you don't want to break the bank, the Tamron 28 to 75 is a fantastic lens. I know so many creatives who use and swear by this lens. So I think it deserves a whole video by itself, but that is a very crucial piece of my gear set that I will never leave home without. The next thing is my Atomos Shinobi five inch monitor. This thing is amazing. I love the screen. It's a lot bigger and brighter than the screen on my camera. You can load LUTs on it. So many different tools and options options, a great tool for any filmmaker. Having an external monitor is a must. Next to the 28 to 75, the next lens I have up in my camera bag is the Sony F4 70 to 200. This is another vital, vital lens in my camera kit. Probably the most useful focal length in sports. You can pretty much shoot any sport imaginable with this thing. Solid build quality. This is an F4 version. There is an F2.8 version. It is a bit pricier, but I am going to make a video as to why I decided to go with the F4 apart from the price. But don't kid yourself, this thing is super sharp, super versatile. I think that it is the must have lens if you want to shoot sports, period. Photo, video, doesn't matter. You need to get yourself a 70 to 200. The next lens in my bag is the Sony Zeiss 55 millimeter F 1.8. Now I won't necessarily use this to shoot sports, but I think this is a great lens for interviews. This is a great lens for B-roll. If I'm shooting a practice, sometimes I'll mess around with this because it's not as serious as a game. I won't ever really shoot a game video wise with this, but I will throw this on my second camera a lot to take photos. This is one of the sharpest lenses I've ever used. I love the depth of field. I love how the images come out super crispy. So the Zeiss 55 millimeter, a solid, solid prime lens to have in your bag. The next thing in my bag is actually my original camera, the Sony a6300. Many of you know that this was my very first camera when I started sports content creation. And up until I had the a7S III, this was the go-to. But even nowadays, three, almost four years later after getting it, it still has a place in my camera bag today. Not as much for video anymore, obviously have 
having the a7s3 but i will bring this to games and use the 55 millimeter in conjunction with it sling it over my shoulder and have it there in case i want to snap a few pictures during a game and the combination of this lens with this camera it results in some super crispy images even though it's a crop sensor, I think this thing still takes amazing video. It takes amazing photos. And I have made a video about this before. I have called this the best beginner camera for anybody getting into sports content creation. So if you want to get into the game, if you want to start shooting sports, I would look at the Sony a6000 line, including this camera right here. While we're on the topic of cameras, I have my Insta360 1R also in my camera bag pretty much at all times. Now, while it doesn't serve an action camera purpose, many of you know I shoot a lot of behind the scenes on this. This is usually attached to my camera cage on a friction arm, capturing kind of a behind the scenes angle of how I shoot sports. But I've also used it here and there for actual action sports when I go snowboarding, or maybe if I want a little camera that isn't as obvious as a mirrorless or you know anything else, I'll bring this along. It's small, it's inconspicuous. It's really handy in a lot of scenarios, so really big fan of the Insta360 1R. Next thing I want to talk about is filters, and this Freewell 7-in-1 filter kit has changed my entire life when it comes to being on the run and shooting games and needing to change filters. This is all magnetized. This essentially is seven different filters in one. You can do regular VND, you can do mist VND, you have an ND32, you have a CPL, which is a circular polarizer, you have a two to five stop VND, and you have a six to nine stop VND, and it's all magnetized, super easy to switch out. And this has been a lifesaver in games instead of having to screw on a filter. It's a quick swap and I'm in and I'm out and ready to go. So Freewell 7 in one filter system, Look it up, changed my life. Truly one of my favorite products recently. So apart from that Freewell 7-in-1 system, I actually have another pouch in my camera bag with several other filters and little attachments that I use all the time. Two of the most important things in that filter pouch are my actual original Freewell VNDs, a two to five and a six to nine. And I still use these pretty much every day. They actually, one of them will always be attached to my 70 to 200. And usually my seven to one set will be attached to my 28 to 75. That way, if I need to switch lenses, there's no reason for me to switch filter systems. I don't have to unscrew anything. It's literally just switching the lenses. They're both by Freewell. The color cast is very, very, very similar. So very easy for me just to go from one lens to another, having several sets of VND filters. One more important filter in here is my original Tiffin Promis 1.8. If you don't know what a diffusion filter is, a diffusion filter essentially diffuses light going into the camera, making light sources seem a lot softer, giving it more of a cinematic feel if you, if you will. But this is a solid little filter. It changes the way your image looks for sure. And like I said, my 28 to 75 has a mist filter built into it. So this one will usually be on my 70 to 200 and then I'll stack my Freewell VND on top of it. Just again, so both lenses have that bit of soft cinematic mist look to them. If you don't have one of these, get them. This changed the way my videos look. Uh, this is a must have for any filmmaker for sure. Apart from that in this filter pouch, there's a bunch of step up rings and things like that, nothing else special, so we'll move on. Next up, audio, and audio is something that I think is so underrated and so important when it comes to sports filmmaking, so we'll get into that right now. First up is the most important microphone in my camera bag, and that is the Rode VideoMic NTG. This is what sits on top of my camera. This is my shotgun microphone for scratch audio, and as you can probably guess, the reason I'm not showing it right now is because it's actually what I'm shooting this video on right now. It's just a Above me acting like a boom and that's what I love about this microphone it's so flexible it can act as a boom mic it can act as an on-camera shotgun there's so many uses for it so many little features split channel audio a 20 DB buffer setting there's so many things in this microphone it's like $300 and I used to have the Rode video mic go and I decided to splurge a little bit and once I got this mic there was no turning back the quality is exceptional so Rode video mic NTG is my microphone for anytime I'm shooting sports always on my camera at all times. Next up for audio, I have a Tascam DR10L. This is a lav microphone. It records internally here, so you do have to sync it in post, but this is a great little, great little microphone. Great quality audio. I use it all the time when I wanna mic people up for interviews, uh, weddings. I don't use it for games necessarily because I've just never been in the position to mic someone up during a sports game, nor do I really wanna bother anyone with it. But in the case that maybe one day a coach or someone will ask me to mic up another person. I'd rather just have it in my bag anyways. So Tascam DR10L, if you're ever looking for a lab, great option. Final piece of audio gear in my bag is a audio recorder. This is the Zoom H5, and I will usually either take this or the Zoom H1, which is just what I'm using to record this audio right now. And I think audio recorders are a really underrated part to a sport content creator's 
gear kit because you can use this in so many different scenarios, whether you wanna you know, interview someone or get into a scrum post game. This is really easy just to put in there and get great quality audio. If you wanna patch into the announcer, you can do that with some cables, with some XLRs, or even if you just wanna get ambient noise of the game for, for sound design later, you can literally just put this anywhere and let it record and it'll pick up great sounding audio. So invest in an audio recorder. You never know when you're gonna need it. And I bring it along with me pretty much every time I go to a game. Getting into the side pouches here, I always, always carry a power bank. This is non-negotiable, whether you need to charge your phone, whether you need to charge your camera batteries, Always have one of these. This is a brand called Helix. I just got it at Best Buy um, once for like 50 bucks. Uh, but this charges my phone, this charges my batteries. This is such, such a lifesaver. Get yourself a power bank. You never know when you're gonna need one. I carry a lot of miscellaneous cables. I should probably organize them a little better, but you know, anything from USB-C, regular USB-C, lightning port, always carry extra cables because you never know when you're gonna need to charge something. And the final little pouch here we have a blower and a bunch of, you know, lens cleaner pens and things of that sort, lens cleaner fluid, because honestly, you never know when your lens is gonna get dirty and it's better to use actual tools versus just using your shirt or whatever you have at you. So a couple of maintenance little tools here and there. That is it for the main compartment of my camera bag. So let's zip it up and get to, my table just broke. So as I was saying before my table decided to collapse on me, let's go through the front pouch of my camera bag quickly. The main piece in this front pouch is obviously my laptop. This is the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is my editing workhorse. This is pretty much my entire life. I work on this at home, on the road, in the office. Uh, design video all goes through this thing. I did upgrade it when I bought it, so it was not cheap. I have a 32 gigabyte uh, RAM. I have an upgraded processor and graphics card on this guy. So not cheap, but totally worth it. This thing even handles my A7S III footage pretty well. I do have to proxy, but you know, it is what it is. Tough pill to swallow. I got this right before they dropped the M1s, which, you know, is my next laptop for sure. But I've had this for about two years now and it's been awesome. I'll probably keep it for another couple of years before I upgrade. I just really want to see if Mac brings out a new M1 or a different M chip in the future. But for now, my 2019 MacBook Pro, an absolute workhorse. And next up in my bag is hard drives. Probably the third most important, actually second most important thing in my camera bag, especially this guy. This is the Samsung T7 SSD. And this thing is my whole life. I literally will never leave home without it. And I might die if I ever lose it. But uh, this is the only hard drive I work off of. This is amazing speed speeds, amazing read and write speeds. And if you've just been editing off an HDD your whole life, stop immediately, go to your local Best Buy or electronics store, whatever you have nearby, and go get yourself one of these. They are a little bit more expensive, but totally worth it. I can edit 100 times faster. My files are read a lot better off of this guy. It is only two terabytes though, which is why I carry this one. This is a G drive. Uh, I think this is four terabytes. And essentially the way these kind of work together is that when I'm shooting a game and I need to dump footage, I'll dump it into this guy, obviously more space. This essentially acts like an archive hard drive. And whenever I want to get footage that I want to work with for a video after a game or the next day, I'll just take the footage from this drive and transfer it into a folder here and I'll work straight off of this drive. You could definitely edit off of one of these guys, uh, but it is a lot slower. You just won't get a, as quick or easy of a process. When I switched to SSDs, my whole world changed, but I never leave home without two of these guys at all times. Next to my hard drives, I have an Anchor USB-C hub. This is super essential uh, if you guys have a MacBook. Before 2019, you know, they got rid of the USB slots and the SD card slots. So obviously when I'm shooting a game, if I need to dump files, this is connected to my computer, connected to a hard drive, allows me just to transfer footage because I need the SD card slots, but it also has two USB ports, uh, two Thunderbolt ports and an HDMI port, which is great if you wanna connect your laptop to another monitor. So never ever leave home without this USB-C hub. The last thing in that front pouch of my bag is a SD card case. Don't remember the brand, I got it off of Amazon for like 30 bucks. Waterproof, shockproof, it holds all of my SD cards pretty much across the board. Um, if you're a videographer, photographer, you know you need a lot of SD cards, so this is great, just holds a bunch of them. 
sometimes I switch out during games. I have extras laying by. If something corrupts, I still have ones on the side. So really, really handy thing just to carry extra SD cards. That pretty much does it for my main camera bag. Let's go to the sling bag now and see what's in there. So like I said, this is the Hex brand DSLR sling bag. I literally will just have this slung over my shoulder and on my back during games just to have extra stuff in here. During the games, I'll carry lenses, uh, SD cards, batteries, but when I'm going to games, I just use this as an additional travel case for different things. My monitor will be in here, my handles will be in here, different things here and there, just so I don't have to put everything in my main bag. And then during the games, I just swap those things out for lenses and essentials. So when I'm heading to a game, when I'm usually carrying my top compartment here, um, a side handle for my camera cage, this is a UU rig, I got it off Amazon. Just a side handle for my camera. If you guys haven't seen, I did put out a video for my A7S III camera rig, which I'll put in the description down below. I go over everything I use in my rig, so this is the side handle for it. Then I have my small rig top handle, dope little handle that goes on top of my camera. My monitor will go on this Allen key magnetically attached to the side. If you guys haven't used a top handle before, I highly recommend it will take your handheld video game to a whole other level. I also have a coiled HDMI for my monitor, a friction arm. This is usually what I mount my Insta360 on, on my cage for that behind the scenes look, but friction arms come in handy in more than one scenario. Really just dope little accessory to have. And I have a gorilla pod in here as well that I take with me. The most cliche uh, YouTube vlog content creator piece of gear, but this honestly comes in handy so much more than you think if you don't want to bring a big you know, tripod. This is great. This is great for your phone if you want to set it for behind the scenes. Um, really, really dope, invaluable piece of gear. The other most important thing in here is just batteries. Batteries and more batteries. I carry batteries for my A7S III. I carry batteries for my A6300. These are MPFs for my monitor. And I also take the respective chargers in here as well. Never can have too many batteries. You can never have too many chargers. We have cables, USB-C and USB, regular USB to charge my batteries. And last, but certainly not least, is this small rig multi-tool that I picked up on Amazon for like 25 bucks, super affordable. But this is an absolute game changer when you're in a game or on set or wherever. Like this is so, so clutch. You have like three different types of Allen keys. You have a flat head, you have regular screwdriver, different tools and accessories uh, for anything you might need. Let's say you wanna you know, put a plate on the bottom of your camera or on a tripod or you need to tighten up a screw somewhere, one of your pieces of gear. You have this in your pocket, you pull it out, saves you so much time. You don't have to use your keys or ask someone for a coin. Um, so this small rig tool is so, so essential to me and never, ever, ever, ever leave home without it. And I highly recommend you go grab one if you can. Last two pieces of gear that don't fit in my camera bag, but come with me pretty much at all times, starting off with the Ronin RSC2 gimbal. This has been my gimbal for like the last two years. Great piece of technology, but I have a love-hate relationship with these things. I love them because for any kind of movement shots where you want to, you know, get a dolly push it in or a pull out or or a wide sweeping scenic or following an athlete around. This is awesome for it. It, it does the job and it's, it's a great piece of technology. I hate it because I find in the moments that I need it the most to work, it lets me down pretty much every time. Before anyone says you're not balancing it right, I know how to balance this thing. I've done it over a hundred times. I'm not a rookie with gimbals. And trust me, other people have said the same thing about gimbals that I work with in sports world. I'm also more of a handheld shooter, but nonetheless, great piece of tech to have super solid in the right situation. So Ronin RC2 comes with me most of the time, even though it doesn't get much use in game. Last piece of gear is this Bendro hi-hat tripod, and it's basically a really mini tripod that sits low to the ground. And if you saw any of my Argos videos and you were wondering how I got that low upwards angle towards the players in the action, it was with this guy. I'm not gonna lie, for a little tripod-esque thing like this, it is pretty expensive, but I love shooting on it for football. Any outdoor sports like football or soccer, you're gonna love this. Would not recommend it for indoor sports like volleyball, basketball, definitely not for hockey because this won't look over the boards. But for outdoor sports, this is great if you want to get that really low upwards angle. Um, highly recommend this if you're shooting any sports like that for sure. So that does it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed going through my camera bag and seeing the gear that I'm going to be using for 2022. If you guys are interested in any of this gear, just check the description down below. I'm going to make sure everything is linked. And if you have any questions about the gear that I use or that you saw in this video, let me know in the comments. Shoot me a DM on Instagram or Twitter and I'll 
I'll try my best to get back to you. If you guys enjoyed today's video, if you guys took something away from it, make sure to like it down below to help me in the algorithm and help the channel grow. And if you're new here, if you just found my videos and you enjoyed this video or some of my other content, maybe consider subscribing. I would definitely appreciate it. And as always, that does it for today's video. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.